books, let's stand together as we sing 854, 854, Joy Unspeakable and Full of Glory. 854. If you'll make sure your phone is on Wi-Fi or not on Wi-Fi mode, on airplane mode, that will help us. We're having to use our backup uh, internet system this evening. Our main system's down due to the wonderful high winds. But praise the Lord, we have power in here, so we're grateful for that. And we trust we're in the Lord's power as well. Yeah. Uh, thankful, thankful for both. Let's uh, pray and ask for the Lord's help in the service tonight. Father, we're grateful for the privilege it's ours to gather together again. We pray that you would uh, meet with us. We thank you for your grace and mercy that is extended to us. And Lord, uh, while we are frustrated with some of the difficulties we're having to deal with and in light of uh, the virus and, and some of these other things, Lord, I just uh, pray you'd help us to keep our eyes on you. We are thankful that uh, we're not uh, under a great threat of imprisonment or any of these things that some of our forefathers endured. Lord, yes. uh, help us to keep our eyes on you and, yes. and to be growing by your grace. Encourage us uh, in the word tonight. Thank you for each one that's here and those that are joining us online. Lord, I do pray that you'd allow the internet service to work properly so that uh, it would not be interrupted for them as well. I just pray your watch, care, and blessing now on the service. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing. Number 864. 864. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? There will never be a sweeter story, story of the Savior's love divine, of the Father from the realms of glory, just to save a sinful soul like mine. Isn't the love of Jesus something Jesus, something wonderful, wonderful it is to 
This month, the PATCH theme was perseverance, and the young people were encouraged to find their strength to endure from the Lord. He promises to comfort us and to give us power and strength when we don't have it ourselves. He's the one who said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And with his help, we can do things sometimes that we don't know that we can. Maybe I can be your humor check now that I know how close you're getting. You know, that reminds me of a Christian walk. When times get tough, you gotta keep on keeping on. Here's that beautiful Bible verse you learned about perseverance in tax club. Maybe if I were Pico's listener, though, I was a little late, can't I? It was getting a little too early. That's a great idea, Jack. Why don't we sit together as we walk? Under the authority and the majesty of Jesus.
work tonight, but it's not going to. So I guess they'll watch later, hopefully, uh, online when we get them posted. So we'll have our ushers come. We'll receive our offering tonight. Again, I want to thank you for your faithfulness to be here. Great job, young people. Keep on keeping on. Amen. Even when the internet doesn't work. <laughs> As I have said often in recent weeks, firstborn problems, right? Not, not huge problems. Ethan, you want to thank the Lord for the offering tonight? Sir? Father in heaven, we're thankful for this good day given us. Thank you for the interesting weather we've been having the past couple days. Please help us to give as you'd have us to do tonight. Please do the offering for your honor and glory. Please help us get to benefit those on the mission field as well as here in our church. May we be with Pastor Meredith as he speaks tonight. Please help us to apply what we hear to our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 4 in your Bible tonight, book of Revelation, the fourth chapter. We're just going to begin reading the first verse, and then as we go through, we'll, we'll read the entire chapter and the message tonight in uh, Revelation Chapter number four and verse number one. If you're able, would you stand as we read the word of God? After this, I looked, and behold, the door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me and said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Our Heavenly Father, what a blessing, what a comfort, what an encouragement is the Word of God. I'm thankful for the offertory music tonight. Isn't it wonderful to be a Christian? It sure is. And to know that our sins are forgiven, that we have an eternal home in the heavens, that as uh, your judgment breaks forth on this earth, and the, what you told us will be a time of great tribulation that we your people will be taken out I pray you bless the message tonight your hand be upon it revive our hearts strengthen us in Jesus Christ may the Holy Spirit have free course in every one of our lives thank you for this portion of scripture in Jesus name Amen <clears throat> we're going to tonight look at what I'll call the third door uh, that as we've uh, studied here, as we've looked at the book of Revelation, the first door that was open was open to evangelism in Revelation 3.8. And you recall there that as God opens a door, no man can shut it. As he closes a door, no man can open it. And God opened to the church, and I believe our church, God opens to us in this particular time 
the door of evangelism, the door of reaching people. We are saved and given the ability to reach other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we're, uh, we're, we're speaking of that door that's been opened to the church. That was the first door. The second door, and of course that first door, is the will of God. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The second door deals not necessarily uh, with God's will, but it looks at from a different direction. I believe it deals with the will of man, where uh, the Bible uh, talks about Jesus standing at the door, and uh, if any man hear my voice and open the door, it talks about the will of man. The will of man to open the door to Jesus Christ. The willingness of man to receive Christ. The willingness of men and women and boys and girls to receive Christ. So the first door being uh, God's will, and that is the will to give the gospel to every creature. The second door has to do with, with man's will, even though Christ is willing, God is willing, the Spirit of God is willing. God wants all men everywhere to repent, to be saved. The second door really has to do with us obeying the will of God. The Bible says, for God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. And so you say, well, I don't know if I want to be saved. Well, you're holding your fist up in the face of God, not mine. You're saying, I'm not going to do what God says. And I don't mean this to be unloving, but you'll go to hell then. You say, well, it's my choice. Yeah, it is. Uh, but you ought, to open, you ought to go through the door. Christ is knocking. And so the, the second door is the will of man. And I believe the third door is the translation of the saints that we just read about. The, uh, the catching away uh, of the saints into glory. And we're going to look at this wonderful chapter tonight. Uh, the third door being the, the translation of the saints into glory. Uh, we've moved in this book of Revelation. Uh, we're now also to a, a third position. The first position were, uh, that we looked at, uh, that was as things were there in Revelation 1.18. It was what was. And then in, in uh, Revelation uh, 3.22, uh, the, the phrase is given, uh, uh, what is, and that's the church age. That's where we're living. That's what is. We're in the church age. By the way, if you think everything's going to always continue as it is, it isn't. Right. Amen. We're living in the church age. The, and one of the problems with the days before the flood is people think, well, everything's going to be the same. And they didn't know, the Bible says, until the flood came and took them all away. It was too late. God closed the door to the ark, and judgment came, and they all perished. Well, I believe, and, and God, Paul believed that, I believe the apostles believed that Christ would come in their time. I believe we're still in those times. Christ could come tonight. Yes, sir. And <clears throat> we're much closer than he was. The Lord Jesus Christ could come tonight. What I'm saying is don't dilly-dally around with spiritual things. God means business. And so the things uh, we, we're looking in, in, uh, in Revelation 3, 22, at what is the church age. But as we get to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says things which must be hereafter. So there's the change. There's the, there's the change, what we would call the change in dispensation, a change in things. The church age is ended. We no longer will see the church after this chapter until Revelation 19 when we see the marriage supper of the Lamb. We see the church in heaven. We see the church with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, well, is, is it mentioned again? Yes, but not on earth. So there's something that takes place here. It's not only substantial, but we need to make sure we're a part of that family of God that the offertory was about tonight that we're in God's family. It, it's not automatic. You have to choose Christ. And uh, you say, well, I was born in a Christian home. That, that's not salvation. Well, I've been baptized. That's not salvation. I'm a member of the church. Not salvation. 
uh, well, I did this and that. And the pastor preached about it this morning. Know that Christ is in you. Amen. Know that Jesus Christ is in you, is in your life, that he's working in your life. Now, we're going to explain the chapter. I thought about different ways to do this. I thought about reading the whole chapter and then going and telling you exactly what I believe the chapter means and then coming back and giving you an outline, and then I changed my mind. So we're going to read the first verse, then we're going to make the first point, we're going to so on and so forth. So the first, my first point from verse 1 is the rescue. The rescue. What a wonderful thing is the rescue of the saints, the catching away of the saved. Uh, you know, as we read the Bible, we look way back there in Genesis chapter 5, and we, uh, we realize, we read the Bible, we know judgment's coming. We know it's on the way. Uh, and we know God is, is not just dissatisfied with man. He's grieved with man. A man basically has turned his back on God. Man doesn't want anything to do with God. Man said, God, stay out of my life. But there was a man that walked with God. He tonight pictures us as believers. A man who walked with God, Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God, but it doesn't say in that chapter he died. It says that he was not. For God took him. And then you go on and you begin to see in there, and, and I believe Enoch is, is really a picture, it's foretelling, it's a picture of the New Testament church. It's someone who's walking with God. By the way, God expects us who profess to be his children to walk with him, to obey his voice, be sensitive to him, to have a relationship with him that reflects uh, his greatness, that reflects his grace in our lives. And Enoch was walking with God, and, uh, and God took him. So he, he pictured he was rescued before the judgment of God uh, came into the world. And I want you to notice if you, most of us are familiar with this, but let me just read it for you in 1 Thessalonians and realize that the, the trumpet sounding here and other places in the Bible, we're not going to read them all for sake of time, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the church at Thessalonica. Some people have died and, and uh, people are wondering what's going on because I, I really believe that they thought the Lord was coming, and why are people dying? Why is this problem coming into our lives? What's, what's going on? What's happening to these people? And Paul explains uh, the Spirit of God wants to comfort people's hearts. And so he says here in <clears throat> chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not as others which have no hope. In other words, people have died. And it bothers us when people die. Death is, is not pretty. Uh, I don't care what they do about it. It's awful. It separates us from people we love and care about. And sometimes it seems it brings great difficulty into our lives. And that, that was the case here. People had died. Verse 15 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we wish, excuse me, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, that's talking about people that have died, will God bring with him. What a comfort. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of the archangel, with the, what's that next word? With the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wow, what a blessing. And I want you to notice the, 
the terminology here in Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked, and behold, the door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me. Does that sound familiar? And the Lord is, is foretelling us here what's going to happen through the Apostle John. I will show you things which must be hereafter. And I believe he's talking about the catching away, the rescuing of the saints, the rescuing of God's people, and uh, taking, uh, taking us, if you would, uh, to our heavenly home. Uh, before God unleashes his wrath and his judgment upon the earth, he rescues his children. And, and uh, uh, as I said earlier, the church is not to be seen again until Revelation chapter 19. What it, what's in between? God's judgment, God's great judgment upon the world. As the Bible says, uh, the, the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, the great uh, tribulation time. Things that, it's, in other words, uh, people say, well, it's been bad before. It's never been as bad as it will be after the rapture of God's people. It's, you say, well, it's just been bad. You had World War I, World War II, and, and, uh, and, uh, and look at history. Look at the history of the world. Things, uh, no, God tells us it's never been as bad as it's going to be after the rapture of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. What I'm saying to you tonight is you need to make sure you're part of the family of God. Amen. And uh, be in God's family and then, and then live for the Lord. Uh, like... Uh, uh, like Enoch did. Enoch, Enoch wasn't walking against God. He wasn't trying to get along with God. He's walking with God. That's the will of God. Well, the will of God's a wonderful thing. And uh, it's, where, uh, it's where we enjoy our lives uh, in Christ. We enjoy our lives with one another. What a blessing is the will of God. And, uh, and I'm so grateful that God has one for each of our lives. So I want you to notice firstly then the rescue. I want you to notice secondly the radiance. Verses 2 and 3 and Five through nine. Notice verse number two. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, the throne was set in heaven. One sat upon the throne, like it, uh, and uh, he that sat was uh, looked upon as uh, looked upon as like unto jasper and uh, sardine stone. And uh, there was a rainbow round about the throne, in in sight, like unto emerald. And I want you to notice verse 5. And out of the throne proceedeth lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which, is, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind and the first beast was like unto a lion, the second like unto uh, a calf, and the third beast <clears throat> had the face of a man, and the fourth uh, beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were uh, full of eyes within, and they uh, rest not day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, Almighty, which was and is and is to come. When those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, uh, who liveth forever and ever, and we'll pick up verse 10 in the, in the next point, but <clears throat> I want you to notice my second point is the radiance. The radiance of the throne of God is truly amazing. We see jasper here. Jasper, we believe, is a, is a, would be like, like diamond. And diamond is reflective. And if you, you think of the glory of God, and, we, we, and, and John is trying to describe it here, but there's nothing like it. In other words, he can't say it's this. He says it was like. It's like this. And so uh, the jasper there is like, is like diamond, in it, in it, and it reflects the purity of the throne, the purity of Jesus Christ. And then there's uh, sardian, uh, and that is blood red, uh, expressing the finished work of Jesus Christ. The life of the flesh is in the blood, uh, the Bible says. And, and Jesus Christ shed his precious blood so we could have life 
He gave his life so we could have life. Uh, he loved us and gave his life for us. And this is expressing the finished work of Jesus Christ at the throne of God. And then there's a rainbow and the, and the tone or the, the color that it expresses is, is emerald or green. And we think about that. We think about God's creation and how uh, green expresses life. And, uh, and we, we look at this uh, wonderful sight through the eyes of the Apostle John. And all of his creation is worshiping him. You know, sometimes we think about creation, and we are so limited. We think about uh, we think about trees and rocks and and birds and and uh, this and that. But we we've never seen all of God's creation. We look up in the stars, and if you could if you could get yourself out of the city and go out in the country somewhere where there's there's not so much as a candle burning on a clear night. You would stand in awe at the stars that we can see, and even the planets. It's amazing. We just we 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 just seen this much of God's creation. He describes these uh, these heavenly creatures that are that are glorifying God in heaven and saying, "Holy, holy, holy!" Uh, look, uh, we know we know we know just a little bit about God's creation. We know. Uh, that he created you and I. We know that he created the world that is, uh, but we haven't seen everything God's created. But all of his creation is created to bring glory to him. And these creatures, uh, that's what they do. They bring glory to the Lord. You notice the, 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 uh, the four creatures representing the north and the south and the east and the west there in, in uh, notice verse number seven and the, and the first beast was like a lion the second beast was like a calf the third beast had the face of a man the fourth beast flying as an eagle <coughs> and uh, these uh, these four uh, four beasts and they're 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 representing creation to us they're representing god's creation all of creation adorning God. You know, <clears throat> man is such a rebel. Women too. You realize we were created to glorify him. And if we realize that now, we live like that now. See, that's what's different about the Christian life. See, we don't have to live in competition with anybody. We don't have to impress anybody. We're here to glorify God. We can glorify God as a husband, as a wife, as a young person. We can glorify God as a Christian. We can glorify God as a soul winner. We can glorify God in the, in the life that we live every day to bring glory to the Lord. That's where peace and joy is. We sang some about that tonight. And it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. I mean, what a blessing it is to be a child of God. But all of his creation, all of the creation of the Lord is going to, is going to uh, glorify him in heaven. And so uh, the child of God is, is taken out of this, uh, this, this present world. And in an instant, we're before the throne. You say, what's going to matter? Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. See, yesterday is only an opportunity. Today is only an opportunity to glorify the Lord in, in our life. I want you to notice verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold this is the redeemed this is the saved this is people who trusted christ from all ages 
we look and we realize in the Old Testament there were 12 sons of Jacob and they're expressed here in this, in this passage of scripture. They're expressed is it the entire dispensation of all the Old Testament characters, everyone who came to Christ, all the people who were redeemed, Adam and Eve will be there, all the way through the children of Abraham, everything, the, 20, the, 12, uh, the 12 there, and then there's what we believe are the, the 12 apostles of the New Testament together, making up 24, representing the redeemed of all ages. We'll be there before the throne. Are you listening? If you're saved tonight, you'll be there. You say, well, how are we going to express that? That's one of the reasons I don't, and, and by the way, I, I try not to use the word awesome because, because I want to say something there that's absolutely, uh, and I, I'm, we're, I don't think we're going to want to talk. We're just going to go, oh, <laughs> wow. And, and, and we'll use our best uh, expressive terms. Man, that's cool. No, we won't. We'll say, wow, what a Savior. What a Savior. What amazing grace. And, and they're expressed before the throne. If you skip over to chapter 5 and verse 9, and they sang and, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to take the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So all the redeemed of the Lord uh, are there before the throne of God. And uh, what a blessing it will be. The redeemed of the Old Testament, the redeemed of the New Testament, those that trusted Christ in the Old Dispensation, those that trusted Christ uh, in the New Testament uh, time. And it will be the judgment seat of Christ. Now, uh, there's two ways to look at that judgment, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about some more, but uh, there's two ways to look at that judgment and when we hear the word judgment, we think somebody's done something wrong. Don't we? Come on. Hello. Yeah. But this is this judgment about is about somebody doing something right. You say, well, it, it is about no, it really isn't. You see, when you're saved, your sins are forgiven. We're not talking about the great white throne judgment. We're talking about the judgment seat of Christ as God's people stand before Jesus Christ and they are rewarded for the life that they lived after they were saved. Not for sin. What do you mean not for sin? Well, let me, I could, we could read, a, we could quote a lot of scripture here. Uh, just, just let me quote uh, John uh, chapter 5 in uh, verse, verse 24. I should be able to quote it, but I, I get old, things happen. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. By the way, it's just not hearing. It takes more than hearing. It takes more than understanding. It takes faith. And believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life shall not come unto condemnation Amen. Romans 8 1 tells us there is <clears throat> now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus this judgment isn't a judgment about sin why? Because our sins are all paid for. They're all been dealt with. Are, are you listening to me? I don't care what you did. I don't care if you killed somebody. I do care, but you understand what I'm saying. I don't care what you did. If it's under the blood of Christ, it's not going to come up again. Because God separates us from our sin as far as the east is from the west. Now, I said that to say this. Don't let the devil make you feel like a second-class believer. If you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And the devil will bring that up. And your flesh will bring it up. Who do you think you are? Well, you just tell the devil you're a child of God. Well, how'd you get that way? Through Jesus Christ. Well, who do you think you are? I'm one of his kids. Because he's forgiven me. So devil, don't bring it up again. 
I'm tired of listening to you. And it took too many people listening to him. We're forgiven. Amen. What a blessing it is to be forgiven. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. This isn't a judgment about sin. What's it about then, preacher? We're going to stand before the Lord, and we're going to be judged for what we did with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the way we lived our life, how we obeyed the Lord, what we did in this life. The reason we're here is to be witnesses for Christ. That's, that's why we're here. <clears throat> we're here to testify of his great works, how he does things. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, it's uh, we're running a race for God. And everybody, by the way, you know, you know, everything's in the Bible, you know that? The Bible says everybody doesn't get a trophy. I'm sorry to let some of you down, but everybody doesn't get a trophy. Depends on how you run the race. Some are, uh, it's just wood, hay, and stubble. Uh, there's nothing, it's all burned up. Some are precious jewels. I believe the most precious thing about the judgment seat of Christ will be the souls that God saved through our lives. Some of them you don't even know about. I mentioned this the other night. I mentioned about compound interest. What a blessing is compound interest. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about you lead somebody to Christ and they lead somebody to Christ who lead somebody to Christ who lead somebody to Christ. You don't even know. You send a dollar to the mission field or $100 or $1,000 or whatever you send. And that missionary wins someone to Christ. And, it, and to a degree, it goes on your account. It goes on his account. It goes on the church's account. And it goes on your account. You cared. Uh, not that you just sent them a bunch of money. You cared. You prayed. And people got saved. And there in heaven, that little Sunday school child that everybody's forgotten about. You ever run into some of those? And I run into people and uh, sometimes you're somewhere and they look at you like, I know you, but you used to have hair. And you didn't look like that when I knew you. I used to go to your Sunday school. I used to do this, I used to do that. Every once in a while, one of these brats will call here. Uh, who's that? Who's the boy that was in your Sunday school? When, Stephen Reed, I said, he's a brat. I mean, he is, I hope he's listening tonight. Stephen, you were a brat. And uh, <laughs> he was terrible. I mean, uh, he's one of those kids that they try to give medication to calm down. All, all they needed was the Board of Education, but that's another story. <clears throat> but he was something else. But every once in a while, they'll pop up and they'll, and they'll praise the Lord and glad to be here. And I'm saved and I'm living for God. What a blessing that is. But it doesn't hold a candle to when we get to heaven and we see those redeemed that we're standing with. And we'll see our missions conference made a difference. And passing out tracts made a difference. And giving John Romans made a difference. And we got, we want our neighbor to Christ. Or we want our brother-in-law or sister-in-law to Christ. Or, or whoever we wanted to Christ will be there and forever grateful before God for the gospel of Jesus Christ and will be rewarded. Amen. What a blessing it will be. The redeemed. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. What you got in your hands tonight? For God. Well, preacher, I've never won anybody to the Lord. If you're faithful to the Lord, you pro if you're faithful to God in this church, you probably have some crowns laid to your account because you probably get the mission. You're probably responsible for one of those Sunday school teachers that go back there and those, by the way, those kids are precious. I see Brother Clay come in this morning with all those, I was gonna call them brats again, but, but we see them, they're little children. And all those kids come in. I'm thinking, how did he get those? I'm trying, I'm thinking, I was telling the pastor yesterday, I said, man, I, or this morning, whenever it was, I said, I just want to go soul winning. I want to talk to somebody about the Lord. I'm afraid they're just going to throw me off their porch, think I'm going to give them disease or something. And uh, we're here to tell people about the Lord. And then I go way back when I first got saved, I just a clumsy, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, I still really don't know what I'm doing, but I know who I'm doing it for. And 
I remember there was a young pastor and winning people to Christ and baptizing. I remember so many things. It's just wonderful. I'm going to see those people again. What a blessing. Crowns. So my, my third point is the redeemed. Are you part of the redeemed? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's why we're here, isn't it? This world's a mess. It's in trouble. But we're not. We're rescued. Help's on the way. Jesus is coming again. Amen. And then there's the there's the blessing of the throne, and we're taken back. Amazing, amazing, amazing. As we'll view for ourselves the glory of God. We'll see him as he is. Amazing when we see him, we'll be like him. Oh, no more sin. My last point, verses 10 to 11. The four and 20 elders, now who is that class? That's the redeemed. Who is it? That's the redeemed. The four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat upon the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure, and they are and were created. I call this last point the reunion. You may say, well, preacher, I don't see any reunion. Well, the most important reunion of all is when we're going to see Jesus Christ. And you know, there's more that there's more to that meeting than just seeing Jesus, but he's going to eclipse everything else. When we see the Lord Jesus Christ, we're, we are going to be... I got a grandson that almost talks nonstop. I mean, I mean, you get in the car... And, and he talks from when we get in the car until we get to the house. And Miss Tara taught him to sing. And his teachers taught him to sing. And, and he sings to sing, sing. I mean, that's all he's, he sings and he talks. And, and when people quit listening, he's still talking. Talking, 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 talking. But we're not going to talk before the throne. We're going to truly be in awe. Before Jesus Christ. But I believe this is this is the beginning. You see, this reunion will be with our loved ones through the ages. We're all there. Bodily, like Jesus, when we see him, we'll be like him. No sin. So the order of things will be absolutely perfect. Everything will be in order. We'll cast our rewards. You say we just gave them to us. We don't know how much time's elapsed here. But God's going to reward us. I just listened to a message by John Phillips as I was traveling. Wow, man, it was good. He talked about the word and in the Bible and how in our English language we tell people if you're going to use the word and you use and and then you put a period you don't just use and 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 well, well the Holy Spirit's got a different idea about it I think he's right and by the way it's only in the King James Bible because the other Bibles don't do it are you listening to me I think there's something like a hundred ands in Genesis 1. I mean, it's and, and was. Well, the Bible wrong? No, the Bible's right. When we get there, God's not, not going to say, and uh, you gave a cold cup of water in the name of the Lord, and you gave, and, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. It's going to be and. Some of those folks that stopped at our house 100 years ago, 
They were on their way across the up peninsula of Michigan and they didn't have any gasoline and we gave them some food and, and uh, we we dug around, got some change. Uh, we didn't have anything ourselves. We might have gave them five bucks or something. We didn't have any money ourselves. I think they took advantage of you. I believe God's going to say you did it for me, we witnessed to him. And, you remember? And, remember when you did this? See, God's trying to get us to slow down to realize everything we do makes a difference. It's not just a whole list. It's not just one, two, three, four, five. Hey, you're out of here. You're done. It's and. What we did for Christ will be remembered. And we'll realize that everything we've done for him, he enabled us to do by his grace. Amen. And our hearts will be filled with such gratitude. We'll take those rewards and we'll lay them down at his feet. And we'll say something like, thank you, Jesus. And we'll be in the presence of God. We'll be in the presence of our loved ones that have went before us. <laughs> I, I was thinking about this message. I was thinking about Pastor Bullock. Brother Lynn, I was thinking about Pastor Bullock. And I, <laughs> Pastor Bullock had an expression. I'd say, how you doing, Pastor? He'd say, better. I'm thinking, I'm going to ask him when we get to heaven. I'm going to say, how you doing, Pastor Bullock? Better, and he really will be. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonder that reunion will be. And we'll rejoice in Christ forever and ever and ever. And we'll never run out of rejoicing. We'll worship him together. We'll praise him together. We'll honor him together. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet him tonight? Are you living for Christ? You know, we would say possibly with all the things that are happening in America, that opportunities are fading. That it's not like it used to be. I remember when I was a kid, you could get a job at one of the automobile factories and you could make an above average wage. You'd have your insurance taken, taken care of. You could probably, most families went from one car to two car families and, and uh, from uh, uh, an old house with two bedrooms, a little bungalow like myself and my family was uh, grew up in. To uh, they got a three bedroom ranch with a, a two car garage, and, and uh, uh, opportunities may be fading. I'm going to tell you something. In God's work, opportunities are galore for us to live for Christ. We don't know the difference we make when we walk with him every day, when we witness for him. Nothing will go unrewarded. No, it will be and, 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 and. I wonder, are you living for Christ? Well, preacher, I used to. Wow. Has he changed? Well, preacher, I'm too young. No, there are none too young. Well, I'm just a teenager. Oh, what an impact a godly teenager can have Amen. in this time. What I'm saying to you is opportunities are all over. Well, I'm just a young person. The mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength. Well, I'm too old. <coughs> no one's too old to serve God. If you're still here, I've been to hospital beds where, where old men or old ladies have testified of the saving grace of Jesus Christ and touched my heart from the place where they were just hours from death. No one is too old or too frail to serve the Lord. Are you ready? You see, <clears throat> the Bible says, as the days of Noah were, so shall the days of the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, what was that like? People were just going on with the life.
part of their life, business. People were marrying and giving in marriage. I used to think that that was talking about immorality. No, it's just talking about they were just living everyday life. They just left God out. You're going to be challenged tomorrow to leave God out. I just got to go to work. I just got to do this. I got to do that. Would you choose to live for Christ? What a, what a blessing. What an opportunity is before his church today to live for Christ. I don't walk out here Monday morning and look like you've been sucking pickle juice all night. Live for Christ. Live for him. We're singing that song tonight <clears throat> about the joy of the Lord. And I looked up here and the pastor had his mask on. I thought, I can't tell if he's smiling. <laughs> he may be grimacing at us. I know he wasn't. I know he smiled. I know Andrea was because I watch her sing sometimes. She gets with it. She, the, the smile, the hands, the song, it's all born. Yeah, praise the Lord. Still further, are you ready to meet him or be saved? I'm so glad I got saved. I'm glad my wife trusted Christ and I did. Watch my children trust the Lord. What a blessing. I hope all my grandchildren get saved before it's too late. I'll close with this. I'm through. I don't mean this to be threatening, but what we talked about could be tonight. God wants us to expect him. It could be tonight. Glenn, you may never get on that airplane in the morning. We may be in heaven. We may be with the Lord. Let's live for him. Let's glorify him now. Let's tell other people about him. If you're here without Jesus Christ, don't miss this opportunity to be saved. That's just what it is. See, I don't want to now. May I tell you, I don't mean this to be mean. That's wrong. That's ungrateful. It's disrespectful. And God calls it disobedience to the gospel. If you're here without Jesus Christ, you come and be saved today. Oh, how we need the Lord. What a blessing is the family of God. Wouldn't it be something if you came tonight and the 20th of an eye, the trumpet sounded. And we were in his presence. Say, well, I've heard that all my life. I've witnessed people say, I've heard that all my life. That's what the people in Genesis said. Because Noah preached for 120 years. I've heard that before. I'm going to tell you something. He's coming again. How do you know he's coming again? Because he came the first time exactly as he said he would. And he's coming the second time exactly as he said he was. But before he comes and sets his foot on this earth, we're going to meet him in the clouds and we're going to be with him forever. Are you ready to meet him? Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful chapter in the Word of God. Thank you for the comfort of knowing we're your child, not by what we've done, but by what you've done. I pray if there's someone here that's not opened that second door, that door as you knock at their heart, that they trust you tonight. I pray for us as your people, Lord, that we be serious in this life about our testimony, about winning others, about being a blessing to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray, Heavenly Father, if you've touched a heart tonight, whether it's a salvation or testimony, Maybe someone you've laid on their heart to pray for. I pray they'd be sensitive to the Holy Spirit in these moments. I pray you bless the invitation. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together tonight.